Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Is hell real? Is it real? Do souls burn in an everlasting hell and they never quite burn up and they're, they're suffering in that ever-burning hell? Is that true? Is that biblical? Is it in your Bible? What about your loved ones? What about mom and dad, grandma and grandpa? They were good people. Maybe they only went to church occasionally, maybe Christmas and Easter, and they didn't study the Bible. Are they saved? Are they up in heaven? If you go up to heaven, will you find mom and dad and sister and brother and grandma and grandpa and your aunts and uncles? Do you agonize? Do you agonize about your loved ones? Oh boy, I just wonder if mom is in heaven or not. I, 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 I just agonize about it. Will we all meet them in heaven? Well, are, they, are people consigned to an everlasting hell that the fire never burns out? Or, as, our Catholic, as some of my Catholic friends believe, in purgatory, you die, most people go to purgatory and they stay there for a while, and then they, from there they move on to heaven. Is it biblical? Can we find it in the Bible? No, we can't. It's not in there. Word purgatory is not in the Bible. Okay, let's go now to the Bible. We're going to the Bible. Please get your Bible, a notebook, and a pen. I know for sure you're going to want to write down these scriptures and study them later on. Now you can have a DVD of this program for free. Now we're also offering two very important booklets. The first is Why Were You Born? Why Were You Born? And uh, let's look at that first. Why Were You Born? And it says at the bottom of the booklet, you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out? I might add for you. Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet. You will be surprised. The second booklet is just what do you mean born again? People might ask you, are you a born again Christian? Are you saved? Now, at the bottom of that booklet, it also says, don't be too sure you know. Many religious people talk about being born again, yet they don't really know what Christ meant by those words. The truth is surprising. You're going to want to know the truth. How do you know if it's the truth? Well, you read it you're along with your Bible. If it's biblical, it's true. If it's not biblical, forget it. It's startling. The truth is startling. Here, made so plain, you will understand. You can read these two booklets in 15, 20 minutes along with your Bible. You can also have, like I said, a DVD of this program for free. We never ask the public for money. So when this program's over, please call us at the phone number that's on the screen. We'll have somebody ready to take your order. Now, if you have some questions, we'll be able to answer your questions. Let's turn in the Bible to Psalms chapter 16, and we're going to look in verse 10. And here we are, Psalms chapter 16, 
And let's look here at verse 10. For you will not leave my soul, this is Jesus Christ, in hell. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. There are three words, separate words, for the word hell. Three se separate, different words for hell. Now this word is the word, uh, it's a Hebrew word, and it's Sheol. Sheol is in the Bible, Sheol, we could look in Strong's Concordance number 7585, and we'll find in the meaning of it is grave, hell, or pit. That's where the dead people go. They go into a pit or they go into a grave. Now, this was written by David way back in David's time. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 and let's look at verse 31 and we'll find the same words being spoken here in Acts chapter 2 verse 31. Let's read it. Acts chapter 2, verse 31. He, seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ. This is David, seeing this before, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Now this word, hell, is the word Hades. Hades is the word hell. It has the same meaning as the word Sheol, except it's in the Greek language. So this word hell is Hades. Neither his flesh did see corruption. So he, his flesh didn't rot in the grave. He was in the grave three days and three nights and he, it didn't uh, rot. All right, let's go now to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 4. Here we are. 2 Peter chapter 2 also talks about a special hell, a third, uh, uh, actually a second rather, 2 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to look in verse 4. And it says here, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, these are the demons, these angels became demons, Satan had taken away a third of the angels out of heaven and came back and tried to, tried to unseat God from his throne. And God cast them all down to earth. Now watch here where God put the angels. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. Now this word hell is a different word. It's the word Tartaru in the Greek. And what it means is a place of restraint, like a jail. These angels are in a place of restraint. They can't get out. It's like a jail. And that's where they are. To when? To when? And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. God is going to judge these angels that sinned. But he put them in a special place called Tartaru. And here it's translated as hell. So there's three different translations of the word hell. And we came up with two of them. One is the grave. The second is his place of restraint. And what is the third? 
Well, let's read in uh, Malachi chapter 4. We're turning back to the Old Testament. The last book of the Old Testament is Malachi chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 1. Malachi 4, verse 1, here it is. It says, For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. You know what stubble is? Stubble is pieces of small pieces of wood and hay and uh, paper. Uh, and the day that comes shall burn them up. So this hell is a lake of fire. It's going to burn up the, those who do wickedly, and they're going to be stubble, like stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So they won't have any children. They won't have any parents, so to speak of, or grandparents. They're, they're just going to be written off. So what, what else happens to them? Verse 4. Verse 3. Let's look at verse 3 first. And you shall tread down the wicked. You're going to tread them down. For... They shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. So what's going to happen to the wicked? They're going to be burned up, and they're going to be ashes, and you're going to walk on top of the ashes. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Now, people think, um, well, they think they're, they have an immortal soul. And if they don't repent and they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're told that they're going to burn up in an everlasting hell because they have an immortal soul soul. Well, I have a check in my pocket for $5,000. If you can find in your King James Version the words immortal soul, or if you can find the words the soul is immortal, bring it to the station. Bring your Bible to the station Show it to me in your Bible, in your King James Bible, and I will give you a check for $5,000. I'll sign it and give it right to you. Why isn't it in the Bible? Because it's not true. And we're going to prove it when we come back. So please don't go away. We'll be right back where you are going to prove the soul is not immortal. We'll be right back. Workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? 
That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, don't touch that dial, because you're watching the only independent TV station here in Las Cruces, the Las Cruces Channel. Keep watching. Welcome back to the program. Now, turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 18. Let's look here in Ezekiel 18, and we're going to start out with verse 4. And God says here, Behold, all souls are mine. So the soul belongs to God. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Did you see that? Let's read it again. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sins, so if your soul sins, it shall die. What is dying? Dying is an absence of life. So you're not going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever burning up and you're, uh, you're never, that you, you would never keep burning up and stop burning up. Let's drop down to verse 20. And let's see what it says here in verse 20. And it says, The soul that sins it shall die. Souls can die. They're not immortal. The soul shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Everybody is responsible for their own sins. Now, you might say to me, well, Meyer, that's Old Testament. Maybe the souls are immortal in the New Testament. What does Jesus Christ say about the soul? We're going to Matthew chapter 10. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Now, Jesus Christ has a lot to say about the soul. So let's read it very carefully. In verse 28, he says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. So if somebody comes along and shoots you with a gun or stabs you with a knife, they're able to kill the body, but they're not able to kill the soul. Now, what, is, what does Jesus say here? But rather fear him, that's God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And that's where we find the word Gehenna, Gehenna fire. It's the, it's the valley of the sons of Hinnom, and it was just outside of Jerusalem. Uh, uh, the camera, please. Uh, it was just outside the, 
the, uh, the city of Jerusalem, and it was a garbage dump. People threw their garbage over there. Uh, they had dead animals. They would toss them over. And they had a fire that was going on and on and on. As long as there was fuel for the fire, the fire was burning. And they would take criminals and they would throw them over into this valley of Hinnom with all the trash and all the fire and these bodies would burn up. You see? That would be, that, that is the word, hell is Gehenna, the third word that's translated as hell. Okay, let's look at, again what Jesus says in Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, and let's look in verse 44. And it says here in verse 44, where their worm dies not. What? The worm dies not? Are these immortal worms that can't die? And the fire is not quenched? So it says their worm dies not. What does that mean? Well, let's read a little further in verse 46, where it says again, it repeats it, where their worm dies not. It doesn't say the worm is immortal. It just says the worm dies not. And the fire is not quenched. And verse 48 says it again. Where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Let me explain worms that don't die. Very simple. I looked up the word worm, and that worm is found in Strong's Concordance. You can read it for yourself. It's number 4683, and it's uh, translated as a grub, an earthworm, or more properly translated as a maggot. You all know what maggots are. You've all, you've all seen them. So here's what happens. The fly flies over, and the fly determines that this is dead flesh, a dead animal, a dead person. And the fly lands on that dead person or the dead animal and lays eggs. And those eggs hatch. And little tiny worms come out of those eggs. And they eat at the flesh. And they keep eating and eating and eating. Now what happens to the worms? They don't die. They become flies. They become adults. So the adult worm becomes a fly. And the fly flies around and looks for places to deposit his eggs. He looks for rotted flesh. And when he finds it, he lands on it, he lays the eggs, the worms hatch, and the worms eat the flesh, and they turn back into flies, and they fly away. It's a real simple explanation, and it's true. So, what do we have here? We have three separate words that are translated as hell. The first is Sheol and Hades are the same thing. They're the common grave where everyone that dies goes into the common grave. The second word that we find in the Bible, it's in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. It's only found one time, and that's the word Tartaru, and that's where the angels that sinned were cast down into this Tartaru, this place of restraint, like a jail. They're locked up in a jail. Until when? 
until the judgment when God is going to judge them. And the third, the third is simple. It is the valley of Hinnom, Gehenna fire. Jesus talked about Gehenna fire. And that's where the body and the soul are destroyed. Could you really believe in a God? Could you really believe in a God that would put a person into a hellfire and would not allow that person to die, but you suffer on for all eternity? Would you believe in that God? I don't. The Bible doesn't. So why don't you do this? Why don't you call up right now as the program ends, call up right now, get the two booklets and get the DVD that you can give to your friends and your relatives and you can tell them the truth about just what do you mean born again. And the second booklet is why were you born? And just call the number on the screen. Now we have an interactive Bible study every week on Saturday at 1 o'clock at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. Bring your Bible, bring a notebook. Every Saturday, 1 o'clock, bring your questions. We'll be happy to try to answer any questions you have. And if you have any questions today, call us up. Ask us those questions. We'd be happy to answer them or try to answer them. If we don't answer them, we will research them and answer them again uh, on the next radio, next TV program. Well, folks, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.